Let's go for it. Hello there, welcome to the Take Break Kazu Show. And today we're doing an unboxing of a Smashing Pumpkins record, a very epic one. Melancholy and Infinite Sadness. Now this right here is a box set, 4LP, 180 gram vinyl, with two books featuring personal notes, photos, lyrics, and more. And I believe there's some like artworks in here. So yeah, this is a really, really nice packaging. It looks really awesome, and it's also um, kind of heavy. When it comes to Smashing Pumpkins records, it's really interesting because uh, with the Siamese Dream video that I did before, their records are really flying off the shelf, and I think it has to do with the fact that through COVID, there's a lot more people wanting to get into vinyl with people getting into more 90s music and stuff like that. I feel like the Smashing Pumpkins records are in very high demand. Yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really awesome. This right here is a 2012 reissue and they decided to press more of it. Retail, it goes for about $100. I got mine for about 110 bucks. It sells out very quickly online, unfortunately, and now you have to get them through like eBay for like, I don't know, like somewhere between 160 to $200. So hopefully it gets another repress again. Were you able to get this record? Let me know in the comments because I'd love to know who was able to get this one. With Siamese Dream, I was talking about how that record was more shoegazy, huge wall of sound, like very beautiful distortion and stuff like that. And this, I feel like it's more experimental in a sense where the band decides to take on a bit more of a, like an art rock direction, like a more acoustic sounds like involving piano and like you know a lot of strings but along with like more soft sound there are some songs in here that have more of a heavy metal influence so it's a really interesting record overall and it's also a double album there's quite a bit of music on there that you can listen to so fun fact number one band took a different approach when they recorded this album they already had this idea of wanting to make a double album in mind i believe billy corgan was very inspired by like the white album and wanted to make something of like The Wall by Pink Floyd of like this generation. And also they didn't want to repeat anything they did in the past. So, you know, even though they had a very successful relationship with producer Butch Vig, uh, they decided to go with Alan Mulder, who's famous for working with bands like Ride and My Bloody Valentine, and Flood. The producer's name is Flood. He's known for working with bands like Depeche Mode, Nick Cave and Nine Inch Nails. So both of those producers would co-produce this double album together. A lot of these songs were written while they were recording this album. And in a 1995 Guitar World interview, Billy Corgan said, Flood really encouraged the idea of not having every day just be devoted to recording time. We would work on normal recording stuff for five or six hours, but then the band would just jam for a couple hours or work on a new song or something. Working like that kept the whole process very interesting. They really took their time on this album instead of like having to just, you know, rush through the process. So, you know, the fact that Flood encouraged them to put the songs together in like the more organic way, it basically gave them a lot of ideas for new songs. During the Siamese Dream recording session, Billy Corgan was known to take over and even overdub James and Darcy's parts. But this time, Darcy and James were very involved in the songwriting and they both played a great role in the recording of this album. In a 1995 interview, James Iha said, the big change is that Billy is not being the big, I do this, I do that. You know, the band arranged a lot of songs for this record, and the songwriting process was a lot more organic. Fun fact number two, the album art is done by John Craig. For the original album art, they were going to build this Victorian set, and all the pumpkins would be in costume. However, the cost to make that happen was $50,000, so the band decided, well, we'll pass on that. By that time, Billy Corgan was very happy with the booklet illustration that was done by John Craig. So Billy Corgan had a concept art, and it was an illustration of this woman on a star. John saw Billy Corgan's idea and he decided to create this amazing collage by using color copier. The background of the album cover was a celestial image from a children's encyclopedia. Then the star that the woman is on came from a whiskey ad where drinks were floating on stars. And the face of the woman came from a painting called Souvenir by a French painter Jean Baptiste Gruz. I hope I didn't butcher that. And the body is from Raphael's painting, Saint Catherine of Alexandria. He'll put all of those together and you got yourself an iconic album cover. In this deluxe edition right here, it's basically, you know, it's 
it's a collage of like all the uh, other art that he has created. But the main art for Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness originally was uh, this uh, this Star Lady right here that you can see. Fun fact number three: the track 1979 almost didn't make the album. So Billy Corgan wrote 56 songs after Siamese Dream Tour, and 1979 was actually the last song written for Melancholy. And when the time came to choose, you know, which song was going to appear on the album, initially producer Flood said the song wasn't good enough, but Billy Corgan just had this like gut feeling that there was something about the song that was just very special, and like just, he just, he just fucking knew it. So he worked on the entire song for four hours, he showed it again to Flood the next day, and he finally approved. Billy Corgan considers 1979 as most personally important song on Melancholy. Not only that, but I personally think it's probably one of the most important songs of the 90s because just nostalgia explosion. Even for people who didn't grow up in the 90s, there's just like some strange power about that song and I feel like it's still very special today. Those are the fun facts. I hope you enjoyed it. And now let's get into the most fun part, which is the unboxing. Ah oh man, look at this, this packaging. It's awesome from front to back. Wow. This looks fancy. Look at that. There's like some texture on that too. There's like an art piece. It's crazy. Let's see here. So, this back cover right here just gets taken off. And look at that. It's like a rising sun. Or is that the moon? Is that the sun? Is that the moon? I think it's the moon. So this is side A and side B, so I believe this is disc one, right? Really cool. Here's side A. Right? And then side B. Very cool. And it's a really nice packaging. Usually box set is for like showcasing, you know, discography like of an artist, but I mean instead it's like this is like a box set for one album, which is kinda nuts. All right, here we go, side C, right, and side D. Sick, and it's black vinyl. Looks very nice, looks very pristine. I mean, I could definitely feel the quality of it. Oh, and also this is the another artwork right here, right? Sick. We have this one right here, side E and F. Side E and F. Keyblade. Looks like something out of Kingdom Hearts. The last of all of the four LPs. Right here, and artwork right there, and we got right here side G. Is it? Yeah, side G. I never thought I'd ever able to say that. Side G and side H, which is an hourglass with wings on it. Sick. All right, last but not least, uh, I believe this is like a booklet right here. So here's the original al album art right here with the, with the star. And yeah, I'm looking through this right now and I'm not gonna show you like the entire thing, but it just has a booklet full of like artworks and lyrics and stuff like that. I mean, this is really cool. And also, uh, just found, found one of the band. Oh, here's a really nice shot. Here's the band back in, I think, 95 when the album was released. I believe this is the promo shot for it. Fucking awesome. This is really cool. Just the 
the concept and like the the art and the idea itself it's just so original really nice and there's the last booklet for it and so yeah so this this right here is all the lyrics so I'm just gonna have open one page and show it to you and that's that's pretty much it the box is empty now boys hell yeah very happy with this let me know in the comments what are your favorite songs off of this record uh, melancholy and the infinite sadness still a classic today and also don't don't forget to subscribe and like this channel and hit the notification bell as well you know i've been getting a lot of great support and people have been commenting on the videos so that's been very encouraging so uh please do that do that for uh this one as well. Also, I have a TikTok, so don't forget to follow me on that. I've been, been making a lot of content on there and really been enjoying it. Thank you very much. My name is Kazu. Have a great one.